All right, so I'm working on a ZF6HP26 transmission with the E-shift valve body. And that would be like the shift by wire, the, the shifter that the park has the button and it rocks back and forth uh, to select reverse or drive, not your typical uh, conventional manual valve. All right, this E-shift valve body has a rod that is actuated by solenoids to engage and disengage park. All right, now inside the transmission, the internal linkage, there is a, a preloaded spring, you pull out a barrel spring, a rotating lever, and a park rod. Okay, now the tension of the spring here keeps the transmission in park, but when the two solenoids are energized, that's how park gets released. All right, so I want to get a little closer up on this here, and we're gonna talk about the two solenoids and, ha and how they work to release park and then we're going to swap out the solenoids. There is an updated M, uh, MV3 solenoid, which is the green one. And of course, we're going to change the MV2 solenoid as well. All right, so let me get a little closer. And also, it comes with uh, uh, another harness. But we're going, to, we're going to put the, once the two solenoids are changed, we're going to put the TCM on. And we're going to also install that little mini harness to power up the MV2 solenoid. All right, so let me get a little closer. And we'll start with that, and then we'll swap out the solenoids. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, so real quick before we uh, swap out the solenoids, uh, when there's a command to release park, the MV3 solenoid becomes energized and the shaft retracts. All right, and at the same time, the MV2 solenoid uh, gets energized and supplies fluid pressure to a chamber in the front area of the cylinder, okay, the cylinder here, which pushes the, which pushes this rod or this piston and the internal linkage, the rotating lever and the park rod into the release position. Okay, so that's how uh, park is released. And of course, you know, again, the MV2 solenoid does supply fluid pressure, so there can't be any leaks in the system. You know, that's where this, that's where this bridge seal comes into play because a lot of times when you select park or reverse and then it jumps back into park, that's usually due to low pressure. All right, so let me just get set up and we're gonna swap out the solenoids. We'll put the updated one in. I don't know if I showed it to you, but here's the updated solenoid and rod or piston. All right, and we'll swap out the MV2 and then we'll put the TCM on. All right, so let me get set up for that, and I will be back in a moment. Okay, let me get this bolt out here. This will slide right out. All right, now, before we take the solenoid and the rod out, all right, this here, it's kind of like spring-loaded, so we just push this, this will push, a minute, just want to get everybody can see. I'll push right down and come out. Okay. Uh, this whole piece come out is one. All right, so that's what that looks like. And this is getting changed with the updated one. Now you see this is all together. Okay, the updated one you put in in two pieces, and then when the solenoid gets energized, it kind of does its thing and and grabs it and retracts it. So we're gonna put the, the rod or the piston in, and then we're gonna put the solenoid in, basically two separate pieces. Okay. Put that in. All right. Just so nothing pulls out or anything, let me just put this back on with one bolt. Now when we take this solenoid out, there's going to be 
uh, like a plastic uh, uh, cap, if you will. Not really sure what the name is, and then there's a spring. But you want to be careful because I don't think the solenoid's going to fly out, but if it does, you got to be careful you don't lose those pieces. All right, so I'm going to take this bracket off here. When you take the bracket off, there's a little tab. This tab, all right, this, this face is out. Face is out. All right, now let's get the solenoid. You gotta be careful of what's behind it. Okay. All right, let me just take this out so I can show you. There's a valve in there also, and this is what's behind the solenoid. All right, so the spring fits into here, and these little tabs here face the solenoid. So let's put this back in. Here is my new solenoid. Got some grease on it. All right, this is going to face the side. So this is going to go in. So what I'm going to do now is just get the rest of these bolts in, and then, all right, so this is going to face, you know what, it's off a little bit, let me just loosen it. CM on, hook the harness up, and finish it up. All right, so we've got both of the new solenoids in here. Uh, all right, so give me a few minutes. I'm just going to get this done, and I will be right back. All right, so I'm going to put the TCM on, and this is where the sub-harness goes, plugs in right here for the MV2 solenoid. And for the rod that engages and disengages part, goes into this right here. All right, so we're going to put this on. So the harness, I'm going to plug in the uh, solenoid right here. Okay. And this is basically how the harness sits. It goes like over the the hole. Down 
this, we'll plug in right there. Okay, and if by chance the MV2 solenoid, you know, becomes unplugged or forgets to get plugged in, of course, this will not come out of part because there's no way the solenoid can be energized. And you also should have a code telling you uh, it's MV2 solenoid. Take those down. solenoids in. All right, this is all good. Our little sub harness here is all plugged in. And that's it. So this is again uh, 6 HP 26. Uh, this has the E-shift valve body. You know, it does not have the conventional shifter like an N-shift valve body does. You know, this rod is actuated uh, by solenoids, which moves the internal linkage uh, to release part. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, go over that with you. All right, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.